We are here in Tampa, Florida at the International Institute of Orthotics and Prosthetics, a facility dedicated to enhancing the lives of amputees and their families. We speak with the founder and CEO, Arlene Gillis. Thank you for having us. Oh, thank you for coming. So give us a little background on yourself and how you decided to start IIOP and why there was a need for it in the community. I was actually a practitioner and had my own practice for several years and I sold it and decided to go into education. I worked over at another college for about 15 years and uh, saw the need to help grow education for orthotics and prosthetics. She decided to become a teacher and used her knowledge to start new education programs that would train amputees, their families, and practitioners. Now you were saying that IIOP is the only institute within Florida that helps train? Correct. We are actually partnered with Florida International University and we house them here to offer a graduate program in biomedical engineering. And so you're not only uh, treating people and helping people that are amputees, such as veterans and things like that, you're also training the next wave of practitioners and things like that as well? Correct, it's very important to make sure that the next generation is up to date with technology and has an understanding of our veterans' needs and we do that here on this campus. What I really like about what you do here is it's a very holistic approach to these guys that come back and you don't just give them a prosthetic and say have a nice day. I mean it's all inclusive including helping out the families and the caregivers, right? Right. That's the whole point of our project is, you know, it doesn't end when you give them the prosthetic and you get them up off the couch. That's where it should start, right? We want to integrate them back into the community and help them and their families get stronger as a unit and help them even find jobs. IIOP has a partnership with companies like Sharp Decision which gives veterans the vocational skills needed to return to work. After living on campus for the eight-week program, participants receive certification and are provided with job placement. Rick is what you call a patient model. Why don't you explain what that means? Rick is absolutely an all-star patient model because we bring patients in from the community to train our students as they're going through the graduate program and they get real life world hands-on experience, but Rick pushes the envelope in everything he does, so they get to see what the, you know, what the top technologies are and apply it real life. We speak with combat veteran and double amputee Rick Cicero. One day while doing something with Arlene, I was given a magazine and in there was a, an article about osteointegration as well as several other things, and I said, ooh, that's my future. And this was about a year after my injury. Osseo integration is the process of securing a titanium prosthetic abutment directly into the bone, allowing for more strength and mobility. I was selected to be the first guy to have my arm done, and that to me was a bright line capability to create more knowledge for our, our medical system, be able to bring it back here and offer it to the next generation. Rick wears a band of sensors on his arm that has muscle pattern recognition, which then controls the appendage. The bicep is still here, and when I actuate it, you see that the elbow will come up. The tricep is here, when I actuate that, you see that the elbow goes down. When I think open my hand, the nerve that would tell your hand to open is attached to half of my old bicep. And when I think close my hand, that nerve is attached to half of what used to be my tricep and the magic that exists, I had to trick my brain into thinking that I have muscles in my forearm to make it rotate. In the very near future, Rick is slated to be the first American to undergo a procedure that will attach wires directly to the nerves in his arm, controlling the prosthetic hand with a new level of accuracy. Hopefully, they can find the nerve that would go to your thumb, and the end state goal is for me to be able to control the thumb on a myoelectric hand to determine what grips I'll be able to use. And then I'm also slated to be the first fella to have that done on my leg. And we're gonna start with a battery powered foot to give me all of those capabilities and then eventually work to controlling the knee as well. Which leads us to the true aspect of developing lifelike capabilities within your prosthetics. IIOP has a 4,000 square foot laboratory dedicated to manufacturing artificial limbs. We're here with Dal Peterson, the laboratory coordinator here at IIOP. You have such a fascinating background. Mm -hmm. Why don't you explain that and tell us how you kind of transitioned and then ended up here? Well, I, I literally grew up in, in an orthopedic uh, appliance shop with my father. And uh, after 
I graduated high school, I went into the Army and, and served a tour of duty, and when I came out, I needed a job, so I began working in orthotics and prosthetics. In the early days of his career, he was more of a mechanic and skilled tradesman than a practitioner. You were just trying to solve a mechanical problem. Right. We, my father used piece. to say, we're mechanics, we're not doctors. Mm -hmm. So every problem that a patient comes to us with, mm -hmm. for, our, for our skills, we can solve by mechanical means. Think back 10 years ago, where we were in, in, the, in the simplest of technical, technological terms and where we are today, the things that have changed then, and if we continue to look at that rate of change into the future, it's, it's, it's hard for me to even imagine where we're going. We're standing in front of a lot of prosthetic devices. Maybe you can walk us through that evolution. If we went all the way back to the dawn of orthotic and prosthetic technology, we'd be for a, here for a long time talking about these things. So we're going to look at some things that are, that are fairly recent, but are still obsolete technology in some ways. Often due to funding restrictions by insurance, some older prosthetic models are still used. This is an arm that belongs to Rick that you talked to earlier. And this elbow joint that's in this arm it was the same elbow joint that we used when I entered the profession 56 years ago. Then going to lower limb prosthetics, I've got a knee joint here again that is, it's at least 30 years old. Actually, these carbon fiber spring feet were developed kind of out of the aircraft industry. Then we go forward to a hydraulic knee and it's got, you can see right there in the center, a little hydraulic cylinder. The technology in this hydraulic knee has been around for 50 years and is still used. Then we've got the knee that most everyone has at least heard about, and that's the microprocessor knee. The microprocessor knee, which functions with electronic input feedback, allows for foot-over-foot -foot travel downstairs. We've featured Winter the Dolphin before on American Medicine Today. She is the dolphin who lost her tail after being tangled in a fishing net. Amazingly, many of the industry advancements that were developed specifically for her are used for humans as well, such as these waterproof appendages. It is really amazing the things that have been done and the improvement of the quality of life that, uh, that the patients who are able to benefit from this experience. Um, you would probably be surprised to know how many people that you see walking that you're not aware that they're wearing a prosthetic limb. Wasn't that way 30 years ago, 40, 50 years ago. Arlene finds gratification in the work they do because she and her team get to see the amazing patient outcomes. It's what's so unique about the profession and what we do. We get to see our outcomes, right? Somebody comes into your office in a wheelchair and they leave walking. Wow, you made a difference in their life and you can see the outcome. Is it always easy to get them to flip their mindset and be willing to accept these devices and where they can take them? It's hard for people when they first get their amputation to realize that life will be normal again. It's just their new normal that they'll have to adapt to. But when you have people like Rick as a, you know, an example and a model to kind of encourage them, look, this is what I'm doing and this is what you can do and there's no reason to think that you can't. I mean, where's the, where's the boundary? Where do you see it going? I don't see one right now. I think it's wide open and however creative we can get as practitioners, as engineers and just, you know, other uh, healthcare providers bringing those technologies to these folks. IIOP does so much to enhance the lives of not only veterans and amputees, but also families and care providers. Many amputees walk with prosthetic limbs today that you would never recognize thanks to the amazing technological advancements manufactured by the International Institute of Orthotics and Prosthetics. Thank you so much for giving back to all those individuals. Oh, it's our pleasure, it really is an honor to serve them.